we're looking at figure 3.1 on page 46 uh, which has which looks at willingness to pay now willingness to pay is a sub subjective term meaning it's uh, dependent on each individual the willingness to pay for something will, will vary uh, across individuals because we have different likes and dislikes um, you might like something um, like going to the movies often and I don't like it so I'm not willing to pay a lot of money but because you like it a lot you're willing to pay a lot of money to, to go to the movies every night so every individual is different have uh, different wants and needs and therefore the willingness to pay is, is very subjective, subjective and, and differs between individuals so the textbook talks about um, looks at another example I'm going to use the example of a guy uh, has been in the desert for a long time. Um, he's very thirsty. He um, he's going to die uh, dehydrated soon if he doesn't get any water. So he desperately needs to get water, um, and in in order to live, so he, he has this high need or want, or rather a necessity for water. Um, so how is this going to look on a graph? First of all, let's draw the axis, um, the y axis. I'm going to call price. Uh, the textbook talks about dollar signs it's because it's an American textbook and they express prices in dollars but I would like you to write price and in brackets P um, and then let's draw a little zero at the origin to show where both price um, and quantity on the x-axis is zero and then we write quantity over here in the textbook, they talk about units of output. Um, it's really the same thing. Um, it's a ma the amount of water is shown on the x-axis. So meaning, yeah, I have one glass of water, two, three, four, five, six. And then the same on the y-axis, the price axis, I have the price the possible prices of the of a glass of water for this guy over here. Now let's start it pretty high. Let's start it at 10 Rand for a glass of water, 20 Rand, 30 Rand. You can see it's quite expensive. If you are not very thirsty, you won't be willing to pay up to 70 Rand for a glass of water. But if you're this guy over here, you will be because your life depends on it. So let's say he's been crawling around in the, in the desert, very thirsty, and he comes across a little cafe or a shop, and the guy tells him, right, um, I'll be willing to give you a glass of water, but it will cost you 70 rand. Now, he might, might be a bit angry because it's, it's, it's expensive, but he will be willing to pay it. Why? Because his life depends on it. But the moment he drinks that water, is he just quenched his thirst a bit, so his, his demand for water also decreased because he's not as thirsty anymore. But he will be thirsty, obviously, he was in the desert. So, the second of glass of water, he says, I won't be willing to pay 70, but I will pay 60 for it. The third glass of water now is not as thirsty anymore, uh, but he's, he still wants water, and he says, I'll be willing to pay 50 rand for a third glass of water. Now he's thirst or his demand for water decreases because the more water he drinks the less thirsty he gets now the fourth glass he still wants water so he says i'm not going to pay 70 60 50 or 50 but i'll pay 40 rand for a glass of water you see over there 30 rand fifth glass now i almost had enough he says i'll pay 30 for the fifth glass and the sixth glass six glass of water he says i'll pay uh, 20 for the sixth glass of water now do you see this this little downward steps that's why we have a, dec a downward sloping demand curve because initially you would pay a lot of money and then the more you have the less you're willing to pay now in economics we don't use uh, column graphs like this we like to use line graphs so what we do is we just smooth it out with the line graph by connecting all those points. And there you have your downward sloping uh, demand curve 
which is derived from your willingness to pay.